Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Brown. I'm the high school principal and uh, this is uh, in lieu of being able to meet for our normal uh, freshman orientation meeting and some things that are going on. Uh, we're going to uh, do this video. I'm going to share some documents with you. Uh, it's going to be a little bit quicker than what a normal meeting would, but it's important that I get some information out to you and uh, just kind of some of the general philosophy and outlooks that the high school does have and how it is uh, different from any previous educational experience uh, that you've had up to this point. So uh, at this point, I'm gonna jump into, uh, I'm gonna share some documents with you. Uh, the very first one is going to be this one. And uh, this uh, just goes uh, over, over some things quickly here. First of all, uh, I, wanna, I wanna thank you for choosing Clear Fork in a day when you have many different educational opportunities out there from online to magnet schools to homeschooling. I want to thank you for being a part of the Clear Fork family, part of the Valley, and uh, uh, for uh, uh, sharing uh, your sons and daughters uh, uh, with us here at Clear Fork. Uh, I do greatly appreciate that. Uh, some names you're going to hear mentioned, uh, not that you'll necessarily remember these at this time, uh, but, but they are worth mentioning. Uh, Jeff Godfrey, our athletic director. Uh, Mr. Ramian, who is our assistant principal. Uh, Cindy Truex, our guidance counselor. Cheryl Lance. Uh, she and Mrs. Barr, Connie Barr, are our front office secretaries. Uh, while Mrs. Barr primarily is focused on attendance, uh, they both can answer all questions, but usually Mrs. Lance does all the general questions and things of that nature. She's the one that will answer the phone most likely uh, in the event that you would call the school. And then uh, Jenny Seifert, who is the guidance department secretary. Uh, she is very good at uh, helping you uh, get some things ready for college, for scheduling, for changing some stuff computer, so she works back there. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, what your school day is going to look like. Uh, it's going to look like nothing that, that we have uh, seen up to this point. Uh, we are a block scheduled school, which meant that we had 80 minute classes, but we are on an abbreviated day this year of only five and a half hours. Uh, all of this can be more greatly uh, detailed and found uh, information on uh, this uh, this next document I want to share with you, and that is going to be right here. This is the building specific implementation uh, for the school. So this is on the website. Uh, you can find this at, 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 on the website there for here for Clear Fork, and it is for the high school contact information uh, upon entering the building. Uh, and this is something that uh, we're, we have a requirement to do a daily health assessment. Uh, all buildings are doing it. When you, if you are riding the bus, then you are going to have your temperature taken and daily health assessment taken before being allowed to get on the bus. Uh, before you can enter the school, and school opens, uh, our front doors open at 7.15. So drivers, if you're coming with an older sibling, or if uh, parents, if you're dropping them off, 7.15 7 is when we open the door. Uh, and the reason that we are restricting it in this fashion is because we have to do a health assessment on all students and everybody that has entered the building. So uh, you'll come walking through the building and uh, we'll take the temperature, ask a few questions. Um, you'll go on, you'll uh, pick up your breakfast if that's something that you're going to do and you'll walk directly to your class. Uh, we can't allow the, the, the congregating in the hallways and in the lunch area uh, before school uh, that we had been accustomed to. So you'll have to report directly to your class. Uh, we do need everyone to uh, mask up, and I real boy, do I realize that this is one of the most polarizing, one of the most polarizing emotional things that has really come across uh, uh, in this area and at this school for some time. I know masks mean different things to different people. Uh, all I can say in that respect is that it's a requirement for us to have those on in order to be able to attend school. Uh, for us to be able to uh, effectively attend school. So please don't misplace and direct anger towards uh, uh, the school, school personnel for following our requirements. We are trying to do some things, uh, uh, maybe loosen up a mask in the classroom, but when we're in the hallways, when we're in those areas like this, um, then, uh, then, then we do uh, need you to, to put on a mask, okay? And it's uh, greatly appreciated uh, for cooperation in that. Once you get in the classroom, if we can socially distance and ensure each other's safety, uh, then uh, we may have the option of uh, 
pulling down our mask, removing our mask for a mask break uh, for that class or for the next class or for whatever. But this right here uh, is important, this document. As I said, it's on, it's on the webpage, so please take some time to look over it. Uh, it does talk about you know, bus riders, car riders, things of that nature. But if the only people that should be entering through the back by the, the back of the school, by the uh, band room and, and things of that nature are those that are riding the bus. Everyone else should be coming through our front door for that health assessment, okay? Uh, the nuts and bolts of the day are right here, the schedule. Uh, we are in these pods. Uh, they will rotate, uh, you know, once, every week and then uh, for after for some of the later classes uh, labs especially uh, we will be releasing students or pulling students out when there is a, a very specific in-class presence is needed for class such as welding uh, such as food such as sewing uh, band things of those natures uh, things of that nature where the students need to be with the instructor in the same room uh, uh, using uh, very specific tools or equipment designed for that class. Okay, so that's going to be a part of uh, part of your day. And uh, please be patient with us uh, for this uh, first week, especially. A lot of this is new. We're we're in very much uh, uncharted territory. Uh, last year, we were very fortunate to have Chromebooks and to be able to uh, uh, at least give something educationally. Uh, to everyone that was a clear fork. Uh, I feel like we walked away from a, a plane crash last year. Uh, we got it to the ground. Didn't look pretty, didn't look good, but we walked away and we lived. Uh, this year, we're hoping to fly the plane effectively, land it effectively, take off effectively. We're hoping that this school year is, uh, is much more uh, effective and, and worthwhile than what the spring was. Uh, so having said that, we are sticking very true to our high school philosophy as, as to what we need. Um, let me get back to uh, another document here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, back to this one on the freshman parent meeting. And uh, here, uh, you know, I talk about a lot of things. I've left some things up here that uh, normally uh, are, are for the, the normal parent meeting uh, that are for our block scheduling and for, our, for everything else. Uh, but because of the, the different structure that we're, we're forced to partake in and uh, participate in, uh, you know, you're not going to quite get all this. Uh, but there is a different expectation as far as uh, high school students. So when you come up here, uh, there's, there's just so many things different. So uh, the student handbook, which is online, also has info about behavior expectations, student press. Uh, when you step into high school, you're gonna leave behind uh, some of the, the different ways and, and thinking and socializing that you had done in elementary and in middle school. Uh, if you think about how, what your education looked like from first grade through eighth grade was uh, very much, you're in first grade now. One, at the end of first grade, everyone take one step forward to second grade. When second grade was finished, you take one step forward to third grade. Uh, when you are a freshman, okay, you are a freshman, it's a little bit more of you are now a freshman, go. And that, by that, I mean there is much more uh, control over the types of classes you take. There's different levels. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going to open up for you over the course of these next four years, academically, socially, uh, in every way, shape, and form. So you'll have opportunities to take different biologies, different chemistry, physics, college classes. Uh, uh, dabble a little bit in uh, some woodworking, some welding, uh, bow, ag, band, uh, you name it, the, the different English and, and uh, social studies, the different higher levels of math, financial algebra that we have available for you is that utterly, uh, it's, it's a great buffet of academic classes and uh, we think that uh, you'll uh, find your niche and uh, be successful and, and enjoy that. So uh, when you do come up here, uh, be, be ready for that. It can be overwhelming, okay? And when you are talking about your academic future, uh, this is not something you, you do not do this alone. Uh, you involve your parents every step of the way. Uh, and that your parents support and whoever's with you at home, uh, maybe siblings that have gone through here, now's the time to really seek out uh, advice and talk about your future, talk about your goals, and things of that nature. 
Uh, now more than ever uh, is the family uh, structure who is at home with you is, is so important. So you need to really be communicating that with them the whole time. Um, parents, uh, I will make uh, one thing, uh, you know, an observation that I've learned having had uh, my own uh, children go through Clear Fork is it's very easy to say they're in high school now. I got to give them their space. Uh, parents, listen up. You have that right to know who your kids are hanging out with. You have that right to know who your kids are talking to, what they're involved in, if they get in the car, where they're going, what they're doing. You have that right, okay? And, uh, and students, you need to listen to me. That is a right that you need to uh, not fight them on, okay? Uh, everything is done because they do love you, they worry about your safety, and they want the best for you, not just socially, not just academically, but for yourself and your whole future and everything. Because when you get to the high school, uh, there are different, uh, uh, different types of adult, young adult pressures that you have. And uh, the social aspect is incredibly different than what you've encountered in the past. And you're gonna be asked to uh, uh, grow and be mature in how you handle things and do things differently at the high school, okay? We will not engage in the same type of uh, destructive, some of, the, some of the destructive social behavior that has been done maybe in the middle school or the elementary. Okay, uh, we are going to learn to uh, uh, process conflicts better, and you're going to do that through our guidance department, through our teachers, through your family, through communication, not through anger, not through doing it blindly through a text or a social media post. Okay, that's not the healthy way to handle things and conflicts and situations that are going to be put in front of you in your life. Okay, so you're going to be asked to grow that way. Academics, uh, those will come. Uh, that, that will come. That's going to be coming your way. We have very nice modules uh, and classes prepared for you. Uh, the selection that, that you will have is going to be very nice. Uh, but the thing that now that you control more than ever is going to be uh, this social aspect of school. So parents, as, as you do continue, one thing is uh, as your son or daughter becomes more busy and they begin engaging in uh, more sports and they begin engaging in more after school activities, please find that time where you sit down as a family and discuss. Please don't give up that time. Guard that with everything you can at least several times a week where you, everyone comes together and you share a meal and you discuss the week, you discuss the day, you discuss the trials, the tribulations, the ups, the downs, everything. And, uh, and students, please feel, please do that. Please engage back with the parents as, as that continues, okay? Um, let me speak to just uh, some of the freshman girls here for a minute. Uh, having had a daughter that has graduated from, from here and gone through high school, uh, I've seen and understand some of the trials and tribulations that can occur. What I will say is when you get up here and uh, it's very easy to get wide-eyed and it's uh, not uncommon for some of the older gentlemen uh, in the school to pay attention to you. Uh, while that is flattering, that is lovely, it's a great thing, everyone uh, enjoys that kind of attention. Uh, what I will say is uh, do not uh, get out over your skis. Do not uh, get out uh, so far ahead to where you find yourself in a situation that um, uh, is unsavory for you. You have one reputation, ladies, uh, and uh, you guard that with your life, okay? Uh, before you think uh, someone is worth exploring and maybe they are a junior or senior and I'm not saying by any means that they're a bad individual but I am saying do your homework okay and by doing your homework not just academically but find out the type of people that you want to be associated with at this school okay you need to start creating your own personal aura of, of those people that are around you okay if you want to be portrayed in a positive light then 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 help yourself okay and be engaged with the right activities and things of that, that nature here at school, okay? So uh, just, parents, I'm not trying to scare you. That's just the reality of it, and it's something everyone goes through, and we all end up fine. It all works out, but uh, it's certainly, uh, there's no sense in putting yourself, uh, uh, starting off in the negative balance or behind the eight ball before uh, things uh, get, get going here at school. Uh, high school boys. Um, you probably will not have this problem uh, as far as uh, maybe some of the 
uh, younger or some of the uh, older uh, young ladies that we have at this school, uh, you know, wishing to uh, engage or date or anything like that. Uh, dating is an incredibly uh, slippery slope uh, for both boys and girls. Uh, so just be careful. All these things will come for, for everyone involved. All those things will, will work out. Don't rush it. Don't wish your youth away. Okay. Enjoy your friends. This is where this, this people will say some of the best years of your life. They're not kidding. They didn't make that up. Uh, they look back and uh, there's many milestones in your life, but I hope that you just as uh, myself and many other people that are in the teaching profession, look back on high school and say, man, that was a great time. And, uh, and don't leave any regrets and say, I, that's where I made some great friends. Yes, I had some, some problems, but, but you know, we learned, we overcame that, and uh, it, you know, we, we came through it relatively unscathed, okay? Uh, parents, uh, when everything uh, that's gonna happen, you're gonna see a lot of changes in your son or your daughter here over the next uh, few years. Uh, you've seen some changes probably from seventh grade to eighth grade. The next big change is from freshman to sophomore. Uh, freshman year, there's a lot of exploring done. Uh, there's a lot of clubs and organizations and attitudes begin to develop and become more pronounced. Uh, all I can say is, as they're going through all this, uh, just continue to love them unconditionally the way you have all these many years and, uh, and everything will be fine. There'll be frustrating moments, absolutely, but that is part of the growing process, uh, you know, it's it's literally the growing pains. So be prepared uh, for some friends to change, uh, for some looks to change, for some some different interests to evolve in your son or your daughter, and, and what they're they're going to be involved in. Uh, one of the other things uh, that you're going to find out is that uh, these years are expensive. Uh, it seems like everything costs money. So be prepared with with proms and homecomings and uh, license and cars and helping students make those decisions about careers or the armed services or anything like that. But there are a lot of different things um, that can cost money. So do be, be, be prepared for that a little bit. Uh, I wish, wish it was different, uh, but, but it's kind of truthful. Uh, stay organized students. Uh, there's no reason. Uh, this is where you need to take absolute ownership of your education. Uh, there's no reason that you need to rely. I don't want to hear the excuse. My mom didn't tell me. My dad didn't tell me. Those don't fly. You are responsible. I, every, every single one of you I see walking around has something like this. Every one of you has a cell phone. Okay. I use mine all the time and I record things in that calendar with reminders and uh, it helps uh, keep me on track. There's no reason that you can't do the same. There's no reason that you can't use one of the calendars or, or anything like that. But write those down, stay organized, take responsibility for your education here at Clear Fork High School. And parents, allow them to take that responsibility, okay? That is theirs, okay? They should be able to uh, wake themselves up for school at this point. They should be able to um, you know, say, hey, mom, dad, I've got this meeting on Thursday night, Friday, whatever. They should be communicating that to you, okay? So, uh, and they'll miss a few, and uh, the, it'll be difficult. And again, this is part of that growing pains. Not only we, are we hoping to create freshmen uh, that are academically, you know, uh, brilliant and, uh, you know, perform well in the athletic fields and get socially regulated here, but we are hoping that uh, the skills that you're going to learn with things like that are going to make you a better citizen. In 20 years, going to, uh, students, you're going to be the leader of, of this community. You're going to be the next generation that comes through Belleville and Butler uh, that helps keep things afloat and to help keep things going. And you need to learn those skills now. And it's just simple life skills. It's uh, courtesy skills. Uh, these are all things that, that you got to have. So now is the time. You, you truly can be whatever you want to be at this point. Um, you're going to have a, a huge selection, uh, more so after your freshman year. But at the end of your sophomore year, you need to be able to articulate and, and speak of what your desire is to be uh, on down the road and have some true idea of where you want to go academically. You'll have the, op the opportunity to go to the Career Center at the end of your sophomore year. And uh, we'll get you down there again. I know you visited there before, but you'll go down again. And you're going to look at it through a little bit different eyes, okay? And uh, I think it's important that the demographics are changing greatly every day as far as uh, colleges and uh, expectation. Colleges now make up, uh, their makeup is about 
female and about 40% male. Uh, this has uh, greatly changed over the years. It used to be about 52 to 55% male and uh, the, the remainder was female. And uh, what's happening is there's a lot of young men, a lot of young women also uh, that are going down to the career center. And there they are engaging in some of that programming and upon graduation, uh, they are, are getting a job and, and, and doing very well. So we need those people. So, uh, so bless all those people that, can, that have that gift and skill that they can work with their hands and, and do those things. Uh, you do uh, truly make the world go round. Now, if you're gonna stay here after your sophomore year, then the expectation is you, you kick it up a notch and uh, you start engaging more in some of the uh, preparatory classes, maybe for technical school or college. Now, we do have CCP, CCP classes available and we'll talk more about those your junior and senior year, but you can sign up and start taking college classes while you're still here in high school, okay? So that is a great opportunity that you'll have there also. But there are so many opportunities for you coming. I hope you're excited. I, I truly hope you're excited. And, and you know, while we, we start over this, this whole umbrella and this, uh, this darkness of this, this COVID-19 and, you know, the wearing of masks and, and all that stuff, you know, do not let this become the new norm. This is not going to be the norm. We're going to return to those things that make high school special for you. You know, we are going to get back to having dances. We are going to get back to uh, uh, having those get-togethers and, and not being uh, uh, so frightened and scared that we're going to get sick because we will come out of this. Uh, the Valley is a strong place. There's a lot of strong personalities here. There are uh, people that uh, are some, they're, they're problem solvers, and uh, that might be your parents. Uh, that might be uh, your, your neighbors. You don't know who that is, but everyone's going to play a part in our, in our recovery here in the Valley. So uh, uh, please, uh, I hope you're optimistic about what the outlook is going to be. Okay, I've talked a little bit about uh, your, your, your expectations here. Uh, uh, parents, uh, there's, uh, you know, I've covered some of the expectations of what you need to have here. Uh, all I can say is you got to stay, continue to commun communicate uh, with your teachers, with your uh, son, your daughter, uh, with other parents, that's good. They're great resources. Don't be afraid, ever be afraid to ask for help or have you seen this? Because at one point, anybody who has an adult grown child has gone through the very things that you're going to encounter. So don't be afraid to, uh, to reach out and ask for help. You know, this is my uh, 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 28th year here at Clerk. Well, I finished my 28th year, but I've been here a long time. That's what we need to establish. I've been here a long time. And I see multiple generations come through here. And one thing I do know is that it's very easy to be afraid and think that, you know, you're scared for your child. All I can tell you is for some of these people that you look at as a freshman or sophomore through high school and you think, oh my gosh, you're, you're scratching your head. And you're like, are they going to be okay? Are they going to make it? You know what? They all turn out fine. They grow up and uh, they are down here helping keep our villages afloat. Uh, they've got great jobs. Uh, they've gone out and they've become great citizens uh, uh, here, not just locally, but maybe in other states or, or even internationally. So uh, Clear Fork, uh, you can't stop us. You can only hope to contain us. Uh, as long as uh, we have graduates from Clear Fork High School out there, the world's going to be okay. Someone with common sense and knowledge from the Valley is going to have the ability and the opportunity to set things right. So, so continue and keep the faith on, on things like that. Uh, back to the communication piece, uh, parents, please continue uh, to uh, communicate with us. Uh, I know on this thing I've got down, it says nothing beats a face-to-face. -face. That's a little difficult. I get that uh, because of um, uh, uh, the current situation. But we will still have opportunities where we can maybe uh, speak, whether it be Zoom, maybe it will be in a larger room. But these things, too, will, will continue to to evolve and change as, as time progresses, okay? So uh, some of the ways I'm gonna be communicating, I've got remind.com and Twitter. And again, these can be found on our webpage. And uh, to allow me here for just a moment, I am going to share uh, another document here with you. And uh, this one is going to be the remind accounts and how to contact and stay in touch with us on social media. Now, obviously, uh, this is going to be a YouTube video. That's the, the latest, greatest thing. And believe me, if I can do these things, uh, there are so many other people that can do these also. 
So we do have text alert for your remind. We also have a Twitter account. Uh, the Twitter account will be uh, primarily used that uh, for some of the uh, some of the really neat fun things, or if I'm referring you to a YouTube channel or check out our webpage or something like that. Uh, a lot of the uh, remind right here, you can see the seniors, you sign up for this and this. And what I am asking you to do or not to do is, is, is sign up for multiple accounts. Each one of these accounts does have a limited uh, number of participants that I can take and hold in there. Uh, so please, uh, if you know you have a freshman, maybe we don't need three or four people from the same household signing up for this. And that's the reason I have to break it up by A through, you know, last name A through L and M through Z. Okay, and, and there's your codes. So uh, uh, please, uh, if you have not done so already, please take a, take a few minutes to uh, pick up your phone and uh, enroll in, in those reminds. Uh, you know, during the course of the year, there may be a time where I need to communicate something like this is canceled. Uh, for instance, uh, school. Uh, we may not be able to drive the buses that day. So you may get a reminder that says, we will all be learning remotely uh, from home today. And that's a very real possibility, possibility here. So uh, that is a, a way we will communicate and we'll also put it on Twitter. And, and I'm sure it'll be on WMFD also, but, uh, but there's great things uh, in being able to keep tabs on where you can be. Okay, so uh, I do look forward to everyone signing up for that and, uh, and getting involved uh, with your child's education. Uh, I'm gonna conclude this with, uh, with saying, once again, thank you for choosing Claire Fork. Uh, this is truly uh, when, when the world seems to be just going crazy around us and, and you see things that are going on in, in other states and, and even in other school systems and even here in Ohio, uh, it really makes you appreciate and uh, enjoy what we have here. Uh, we do have a special place. We've got special community members. Uh, we have uh, great siblings that have come through here. Uh, we've got a great teaching staff. Uh, we, are, we have uh, the, tech, the technology that many schools are envious of, and uh, we certainly have the know-how of, of how to teach and educate. So please, please continue to be a member of the Clear Fork Valley Schools, uh, you're part of a, a very special foundation, uh, and it, sometimes you don't realize that until you get a little bit older how really cool and special it is, and unique it is, and the friends that you're gonna make, okay? So until then, uh, I'm gonna sign off here. I'm gonna end this, and uh, I want to, once again, thank everybody. I am so looking forward to uh, seeing some faces, even if they are masked up for a little bit, uh, I look forward to seeing you walk in the hallways here at Clear Fork and uh, helping make us a better place also. So thank you and, and go Colts.